welcome back to UE5 VP Guru. Um, as promised, this is a members tutorial. This is a members tutorial for, to start off with. So thank you everyone who has subscribed as a member. I appreciate the support to the channel. I did say when the final Pokemon episode, episode 40, hit 50 likes, I would consider rebooting the series so it was far more efficient um, because I've obviously updated the code as I've been doing my own Ringmon game. And uh, as a result, I think uh, it's time that I rebooted the series for the members to begin with and obviously to um hopefully include multiplayer i'm doing that for my game at the moment so obviously uh, as i complete that code i will uh implement it into this series as well but this is all the code i've done for my own game um we're going to build it together so you actually see the process that i did and you don't just get an explanation either so this is a lot uh, more um useful for beginners as well so uh to begin with we're going to basically be spending this episode setting up a lot of the uh information we're going to be needing down the line um so we're going to start with a new um folder and we'll call this uh we'll call this creature info i've got a file for pokemon um which is going to have all the models in uh you can see that i need to still sort out the uh materials and stuff but i've got the original pokemon for this one uh, so that it makes life a little bit easier for you guys if you're making Pokemon games. So we're going to Creature Info, and without wasting any time, we're going to make a bunch of enumerations. So if you go into Blueprints and click Enumeration, and the first one we're going to call is E Active Status. We're then going to go in and create another one, and we'll call this one E Attack Type. We're going to need about eight of these, if I remember correctly. Um, so E attack type we're going to call it e conditions we're going to create another one and we're going to call this uh e damage type and we're going to call another one e evolution type and we're going to do e gender We're going to do E held item list. That's going to be for when we do items and we do our held items. Uh, e ringmon type. And that is to do the type of ringmon we have. Uh, save every chance you get because uh, you don't want it to actively do a crash and you lose something. So the next uh, few things we need are going to be struts. So again, if you go down to blueprint, and we create a strut down the bottom there. And the first one is going to be called move strut. Now, while I'm creating these, I will just say um, I apologize to anyone who's followed the old series and now wants to follow this series. There's going to be a lot of differences because I've changed a lot of code to make it work a lot nicer than before. So I do apologize if you're finding that you're making a lot of changes. Maybe as a uh, idea, it would be good to create a new folder and create all the code in there so that um, you're not ruining your old code if you've made it to episode 40. So, but if you still want to follow along and see the changes I've made. So um, just bear that in mind. Ringmon base stats. I just wanted to say that before we moved on. Um, we'll need another structure and we'll call this one uh, F ringmon basic information now you might think that sounds like the same as the last one i promise you it's not uh we need to create another one called um f ringmon ev we will need to make one for our ivs as well f ringmon evolution i'm doing these in order by the way evolution um F ringmon final stats. F ringmon. Oh, I'm pulling this ringmon. Whoops, it should be Pokemon. Oh well. Uh, I I was running on autopilot there. Uh, it doesn't matter. F ringmon party info. And finally, we need. Uh, do, 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 where is it? 
F Ringmon. Oh uh, no. Typing multiplier. I'm going to change these from Ringmon to Pokemon just so you guys can aren't getting confused. Okay, so I've changed all this back to Pokemon. Uh, so it obviously keeps in line with what we're trying to do here. Um, so now we basically need to settle this information. We will need to set three data tables as well after this, but we can do that once we've actually inserted the information. So the first one we're going to do is e active status. And you probably already know what this one is, but we're going to do none. Uh, we need to do a sleep. You can set up as many as you want, by the way. It doesn't matter um, how many you have. You can, if you want to do extra ones, you can add as many as you like. It, this is just the ones I decided to do for Ringmons. Um, and as a result, this is probably what I will cover uh, in uh, this Pokemon one as well. So if you want to add some extra ones, be my guest. But obviously... Um, that's up to you guys. Okay, so we're going to do E attack type now. And the kind of moves we're going to do is uh, damage move. We're going to do um, status move. We're going to do a condition move. Or we're going to do a combo of the, of the three just to try and keep things a little bit easier. So you can close that one down. Next, we're going to do uh, the E conditions. Again, those are going to be very similar. So they're going to be like none. We're going to do um, burned. Oh. Sleep. Frozen. We'll also do uh, Confused. We're going to do uh, Poison. And we're going to do Any. This will make sense again later on. The next one we're going to do is the E Damage Type. And those are very simple. It's just uh, Physical and Special. If I could spell today, that would be nice. Special. There we go. Now, the next one is going to be our evolution type. And um, you could have as many evolution types as you want. Again, a very similar thing to like the conditions. But the, the thing is, with Pokemon nowadays, you have so many different, um, different ones that, you know, you could go forever. Like they have amount of steps taken, you know, um, be in a certain location, have an evolution stone, trading, conditions, you know, there's there's so many different ones uh, that you could um, change. So just bear in mind that, you know, for Pokemon, you could have a very long list if you followed the whole, the whole list. But I'm going to do the main three, which is like a level, um, either an evolution stone or trade, you know, we'll, we'll cover the main ones, basically. So... Um, the next is the gender. That's very simple. It's, um, you have three. It's either none for a legendary, uh, it's either male or it's, uh, female. So that's the three. Um, very simple stuff. The next one is going to be, uh, we're going to do our held item list. Um, now I made up a bunch to be honest, I can't remember many of the held items that you get in Pokemon, to be honest. Uh, so I'm just going to put the ones I used in for um, Ringmons. Uh, Plasmic Residue. I think I spelled that wrong with an I. Residue. Um, and I put in like Hot Coal and sticky web uh we'll leave that as is this for now we won't probably touch upon that too much to be honest i haven't even implemented that into my game yet but um it's something i need to do 
So the next thing we got to do is our Pokemon types. So, you know, I'm only going to use the ones I'm going to do. So we've got grass, we've got uh, fire. Oh my god, my computer is lagging crazy. And we've got water. We've also gonna we'll probably end up touching upon um, wind. I think it's wind for Pidgey, isn't it? Wind wind type. Uh, and then we've got a uh, bug type, and Rattata is normal. So we'll we'll probably cover about as much as that. So we'll only we'll only stick those in there for now. Um, so that's our enumeration done, which is great. I I'm not gonna push this video too far. We'll we'll cover this over two episodes probably. So we'll we'll go for a little bit longer though. Let's start on our structures. So the first one is our move structure and we need to know a bunch of information for our moves let's just make a bunch of these we'll need a lot of them uh the first one we need to know for our moves is our move name and we change that to a name variable i'm just gonna save this just in case i don't want this to crash and then it's been a little bit laggy i don't like it and i'm worried it's gonna crash so we'll just save uh we want a description of the move uh i'm not gonna probably cover that because you should be able to just change a text document on when you open up a move and stuff so we'll i'll leave that go that one down to you probably no doubt um we have a move type and this one is going to be a written version of it and the other one is going to then be the move type which we'll also come to in a moment um then we have um a damage type sorry the reason we have a written and a move type uh for two different ones is because we need to pull this name when we want to write it in like for example the pokedex you need to know uh the written version of that name it's a lot harder to pull out a string from a um uh from the oh it's because i've done it in pokemon I'm like e pokemon there we go it's a lot harder to to get that from a enumeration. Uh, so we need to get the Ringmon type or the Pokemon type for the move type. Uh, for example, fire, water, grass, whatever the move type actually is. Uh, we then need to get the uh, E damage type we set up. That's going to be our damage type, whether it's like a condition or a physical, or special, you know, all that sort of stuff. Uh, we need to know then the um, uh, move accuracy we also need to know the move power we also need to know a few other things we need to know whether it is a stat up move or a stat down move you could probably get away with using the same boolean to be honest because if it's false it'll just go into the other one um but that's how i did it here uh, we then need to know our debuffs. These are a bit of a pain to set up, to be honest, but um, we will go through it at some point. Uh, we're going to set that up as a map and a float. So click on this little down thing, click on the map, and then click float. That's how we're going to set that up. Uh, and it's either going to D or buff us, one or the other. And then we go to, uh, is it uh, an affliction? Does afflict and by does afflict we mean uh does it sort of give a potential status condition so for example when you use ember you have a certain percentage chance of causing burn that's kind of what it means by that we need three more and then we need to know what that condition is if it does do that what is the condition it um applies and that is our e active status we can use the same one there and um then we can go to our condition chance which will be a integer so is it a one in five chance of giving it giving the other ringmon a um burn effect and the last thing we need to know is what is the max um amount of times we can attack with this move so for example with fury, fury swipes you have a chance of hitting three to five times or three to seven times, whatever it is, 
uh, and this max multi move will basically determine how many times you're going to hit. But, so if you put it as ten, it will basically randomize and say, okay, you hit three times, or you hit ten times, or you hit one times. If you set it to one, it will only ever hit once. Um, that's basically how it works. So that's why it's an integer. We don't want like half numbers. We don't want to do a half hit, you know. <laughs> so the only thing we need to do in the def the defaults for this one is we need to set up this map because we don't want to have to do that for every individual uh, move. We want to do it um, every time, and we will need eventually sixteen of this. So we're going to do HP up. Uh, and we set these all to one so that uh, no matter what happens, it will always do the one damage if you forget to change. If you set it to zero, it'll do nothing every time. Uh, we need to do uh, uh, HP, attack, defense, all of the things that Pokemon use um, as up. And then we need to do the same thing down. But just copy what I'm doing. Make sure case sensitive. Uh, it does matter. I know a lot of people forget this. It's an easy thing to do, but remember your case sensitive stuff that you're doing. Uh, it's super important. Um, speed up. That's a one. That's a one. All of those go to one. Uh, accuracy is accuracy up as well matters, and that's a one too. So we need to do this for uh, evasiveness as well. I can never spell this. Evasiveness up. I always spell that wrong. No doubt that's going to bite me in the ass later on down the line. So then we need to do it the same the other way. HP down, attack down, um, defense down. This is probably the most painful, <laughs> painful one to set up. Once it's done, though, you shouldn't need to do it again. You'll just need to change figures. Uh, SP defense. Ah, oh, I can't spell today. Defense down. That's because I'm rushing. I shouldn't rush. Uh, speed down, and then it's just accuracy and evasiveness. Accuracy down, and just ignore me while I do this one. <laughs> I'm just gonna copy and paste it so I don't make another mistake. There we go. And then just set all these to one as well. So the reason we set it to one is if you times by one, typically you get the same outcome. So for example, we can amend all of these values. If they're all one, it'll have no effect on whatever we multiply it by. Whereas if we set it to 1.1, as an example, we'll multiply it by 10%. So uh, that's kind of the rule of thumb with that one. That's why I send them all to one in the defaults so that when we create a new move every time, every move has these set as one until we want to actually change a status effect so save that that should be the only default you need to touch on this and then that is our move strut setup now we're at the 20 minute mark i'm going to end this here so i will start recording the second episode almost straight away members you will get this hopefully back to back back to back back to back you'll get all the episodes as and when they're done up to the point where i am with my code and hopefully it should be a little bit more um make a little bit more sense to you guys um than the first series so thank you so much guys for watching thank you so much for all the members who have followed as well and thank you to everyone who subscribed and watches down the line i appreciate you guys just as much as well uh so thank you so much for the support to the channel and i'll see you in the next episode much love take care bye